Okay, Michelle, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how to provoke your opponent, okay? Now look, which shoulder is leaning forward? What we're going to do is we're going to hit that one first, right? Okay. Watch what happens when you hit it. My other one turns, right? Right. Hit that one next. Oh, man. All right, so I straightened out, right? And my hands are still not here. Watch one more time, and I want you to add a head slap after that. Ready? Go. Boom. Other side. Boom. And then watch. Boom. It's a snap down, right? So look, there's two different things I can do. I can A, go right here after your leg, which in turn, just step back. Boom, I missed it, come back. Or, right here, I'm gonna go rush an arm tie. I don't like this hanging up my head, so I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna rush an arm tie. Yeah. Now, if you guys that are at home trying to figure out what a rushing arm tie is, I'll show you right now. Michelle reaches up for my head, left hand. She's adding a lot of pressure. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the back of the arm, just like this, and I'm gonna control the elbow. At the same time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up and grab the wrist. Boom, at the same time, here. I can use this part of my arm if I really want to to cut this part. Now watch. Come on this side. So now watch. Same time here or same time here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my hips away from the shelf. If I open up close to her, I'm going to choke myself. It doesn't work that way. I'm going to go the opposite way. Here. Watch my feet. And my head. If I don't turn my head, this hand locks up on my neck. So what I need to do is I need to clear. The hand actually clears out. But with the aid of my hands, now I have control. This right here is a Russian arm tie. Wrist control. When I pull it down like this, I'm gonna pull it back to my stomach. And she's gonna come back into me. From this part, I have multiple options. What we're gonna learn is how to defend this. I'm sure you guys have been in this position before. One more time. Michelle's gonna provoke her opponent. I don't like it, right? Oh, good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna provoke Michelle now. Now I'm going to do. I'm gonna hit the shoulder. Boom! I hit the other shoulder. Boom! And I hang on her head. She does the Russian arm tie. Right there. See how this works? Pull this into your pocket. Now she's what she's gonna try to do is go for this leg and try to trip me down. Go ahead, try to do that. I'm gonna clear this leg, I'll see? And look, she can go for a knee pick here, so I need to defend more. Take your hand, make it be like this, or a duck, go to a neck. And look at, see how the back of my palm does this kick out? I'm gonna kick out Michelle's neck, and I'm gonna use my thumb and my hand to control her neck. As I do this, I'm gonna try to straighten out my hand. I circle towards the right, and what she's gonna try to do is circle towards me. See how this works? Boom, one more time, and here we go. This is where the move comes in. This is the fun part, this is the task spin. This is actually something I've been working on for a long time. This is my move. This is a counter defense, and watch what I do. I'm gonna turn thumb down. As I take thumb down, look at how my feet are. If you're this way, it doesn't matter. You can shuffle your feet. I have this facade that I'm painting in front right here. I can move behind it. Just like this, okay? We call that a drop step. Now I'm here. Let's just say I'm this way, and I circled out. I'm going to take my left hand and put it in my back pocket as I step in the left foot. If I step in too close to Michelle, too much. I need to make sure I stay behind this facade. Look at, she's got full range of my arm, right? Scary, right? But watch what happens when I turn and I twist and I level change. And I put it in my back pocket, she falls out. My right hand is going to twist the mat almost like I'm break dancing. And look, watch my back foot. It's going to spin around like a dragon tail. By this time, if I see this, look at, I have enough range and gap right here and a delay in time where my hands can clear. Now look, what makes more sense? My left hand come here or my right inside? Right inside. If her knee is bent, watch what happens when she pulls it. Here's you right into it. The next thing is, what's better than one? Two. Come on, this side circle. When I get to this spot and I'm here, watch. Sprawl down. Her knee goes to the mat. Boom, right? See how my hand is up on her mid, set, mid, uh, mid uh, leg, back up? Hamstring, I'm sorry. When I get to here, what we learn at Grand Valley State, look where my head's at, too. I don't want to be here. I want to be up. Watch where my hand's at. Yeah. See them right here. The difference is from here, sprawl, sprawl. Yeah, she sprawled. Yeah. She can't really get down. Yeah. Now watch, see if I get to here. And I keep my hand lower, yeah. she can't yeah. do it. What's, what's better than one? Two. Two. Watch my hand goes. I cross over it. At the same time, 
I pivot my back foot. I get to here. So now I'm already on this guy's legs from his aggressive. And then pass it on. So here. Once we get to this position, we're looking for twister side control. I'm already past the guard on the way down. My hand, I'm going to clear. Try to go for twister side control right here. As I keep twisting, look at how her arm pops up. I'm going to go for reverse march now. As I'm doing this, go back, pull your hips this way. And she goes this way, I'm going to use twister side control right here to keep her arm off the mat, right there. I'm going to take this back arm and I can threaten like I'm going to go twister here, but she's going to turn the other way. Turn the other way. Watch that arm. Slide this in here. Into Mars, or into our situation. She sits up. Where's my third move? Mars. Now she's in my world. Boom. And then right here, I want to relax. If I go too tight right here, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get exhausted. I'm gonna get that pump that I don't want. So I'm gonna stay chill right here. And look at how she's on both knees. I'm gonna chill, chill, scoop, chill, scoop, chill, scoop, until I see her start to finally do that. Right there. When she falls on her hip, that's when you start to make this tighter. When I sink it in, see how my arms shake a little bit? That means it's loose, but she, I let go of the tie. And then I finish. Go. Nice. Let's do it now. We'll sleep. For the cycle, you're going to notice that Tony and I aren't simulating so much of an MMA environment, but more a grappling wrestling environment. Doesn't matter. All of Tony's flashy moves here are to check my movement and distance, so he can try to set up a takedown. Since I'm going up against a great wrestler, I'm not going to be throwing too many kicks anyway, so Tony only has to worry about my hands. That means he's using a lot of level changes and head movement. You'll notice here that Tony tries his own Russian arm tie. Another way to defend this, one that we didn't explore too much in the walkthrough, is to disrupt the arm tie by bracing against your opponent's neck with your free arm and pulling down. This helps keep the arm caught in the arm tie from being extended, keeps me from getting pulled off balance, and keeps Tony from being able to close distance to take me down. All of this combined with the fact that Tony's feet aren't in the best position for leverage, tells you that Tony should abandon this Russian arm tie, which is what he does. When Tony grabs my head, I've got to act quickly because I'm in a bad position. Tony's lead foot is inside mine, which means he can set up all kinds of leg sweeps, throws, and takedowns. Plus, his left hand is free. He can get off some really powerful uppercuts or elbow strikes. This is where the Russian arm tie, for me, will come in handy and help me regain control. Notice the mechanics for a good Russian arm tie. With my right hand, I've gripped Tony's wrist from underneath and drawn it into my hip that's opening up away from Tony. My left hand has cupped his upper right arm and pulled it close to my chest. My shoulder is driving forward and down. All of these factors, opening my hips and pivoting away, pulling Tony's wrist towards my far hip and isolating his upper arm and driving it down, immediately helps me escape my predicament and gives me leverage. Now I'm the one who has the sweep and takedown openings, but not for long, because as soon as Tony feels that pressure, he goes for the Tasmanian devil spin. This is such a great counter because if you hit it right, you end up in a great position for a fast, powerful takedown that easily transitions to a dominant side position. As we run it back and forth from two angles, you can see that the one big flaw in my Russian arm tie is that Tony's right thumb is pointing down, not up. You need to have your thumb pointing down to pull the spin off quickly. As Tony spins, he's driving his free hand either to the floor, or if you want to do it really fast, as he does, directly behind my left calf. At the same time, his right arm in the arm tie slides out, almost like a limp arm escape. Tony continues to spin and change levels, and by the time Tony hits the intermediate point of the Tasmanian Devil, I'm basically draped over his back. He's got deep penetration to take me down. His right hand, the one that was in the arm tie, is now free to grab my left calf and prevent me from sprawling. His left hand, which was bracing my left calf during the spin, has now transferred over to my right leg to immobilize it in the same way. Tony's head is up and hard against my ribcage. 
Even if I was fast enough to try a guillotine with my left arm, I couldn't pull it off because of his leg control. He's got me in a very weak position. And remember, this is all happening very fast. Now as Tony drives me to his left side and not straight back, he stays close to me, so when I go down, he's already on top of me, past my legs and guard. I can respond with a headlock to keep him from posting up and punching, but it's still quite easy for him to move into twister side control by simply opening up his right leg and sitting off to the side of me. We've moved over for a better camera position. Now you may remember the twister side control from our episode with Eddie Bravo, and we've got the same basic characteristics here. Tony's left knee and arm are against my hips to immobilize me. His own hips up high on my chest and right foot working as a driving base to keep pressure on the top of me. But instead of going to mount like Eddie, Tony wants to set me up for the reverse Darsh choke named after Joe DRC, which is also called the Marsh choke, named after Mark Lehman. However you want to call it, Tony needs me to turn my hips away from him to start it. Tony even helps me along when I set up guard pass protection with my legs. As I'm pushed over on my side, he slides up into a modified north-south position and at the same time slides the left arm that was isolating my far hip under my chin to end up shooting past my left shoulder. Now most advanced folks are going to see the choke already, but it's important to highlight the setup. When Tony has me in twister side control, he needs at a minimum for my right arm to be above him, meaning he can't be laying on it in side control and it definitely can't be below him or near my side. As he pushes me to the side and transitions to north-south, he has to keep pushing that arm up near my head. You'll sometimes hear this move referred to as the can crusher. My arm has got to be up near my head, so when Tony snakes his far side arm under my chin, he can also collect that arm. It's an arm triangle, which is what the Dars, Mars, and Bravo chokes are really variations of. Now I immediately turn to my knees to drive out of the choke, which rotates Tony to his back. No problem. He just holds the position until I drive myself over back to my side. When my momentum is gone, he can apply the choke without exhaustion of straining his arms. Some final points of the choke. Like all arm triangle variations, my arm is doing half the work on the choke. That's why it's there in the first place. Tony's not trying to squeeze my head so much, meaning he's not squeezing his arms towards each other to crush my head or my neck. Instead, he's trying to keep his arms tight while collapsing down in his center. That's where his core strength is, not in the lateral squeezing you do with the arms. That's why patience is required with arm triangles. They're blood chokes, and strength doesn't get the tap so much as good positioning and using your core strength. And tap I do. Remember, there's also the twister variation that we're gonna drop soon. As always, thanks to Fighter Girl, and remember our new sponsor, Throwdown. See you next time on The Hooks. Sink them in.